and welcome back to the International Down Low, where we give you the low down on the teams and players going to the International. From their humble beginnings to their biggest victories, their darkest secrets, and their most proud achievements, their means, their dreams, we got it all here, so let's get started. This week, we take a ride on the winner's bus and see the squad that started off as a bunch of pub stars, but grew with the leadership of a legend to become one of the most fluid teams in Dota 2, Team Liquid. Team Liquid has had a rather sordid history in the world of Dota 2. Originally a North American squad, Liquid was responsible for such incidents as the Blog Boy scandal and their most grievous and horrendous act, creating the career of IX Mike. As an NA squad, Liquid never saw much success, but after hard work and dedication, Liquid discovered the secret of becoming a top tier Dota 2 team, kicking all the NA players and moving the team to Europe. Five Jungs, a new team formed by an old pro and his new hotshots, were picked up by Liquid and immediately were riding high before TI6. They made two major grand finals in a row, one of the most breakout players in the world, Jerax, was on the team, and they were captained by one of the greatest captains in Dota 2 history, the non-stop chatterbox Kuro, a legendary support who survived years at Puppy's side without a scratch physically. In the run-up to TI6, Kuroki led Liquid to a victory at the first ever Epicenter event in Moscow, beating Evil Geniuses and OG in the playoffs before finally going head-to-head -head with Newbie in a best-of-five grand finals, which ended 3-2 in their favor. Liquid then flew to Germany, where they placed top four in ESL1 Frankfurt, followed by a trip to California for the Summit 5, where they also got third place. But the big one, the International 6, was on the horizon, and the team that many thought would take the tournament fell short, placing eighth. The team had stuck together since the days of five Jungs, but after their loss at the massive $20 million tournament, Fada decided it was all too much for him and he needed a break, while Jerax sold his soul and joined Liquid's sworn enemy, the dreaded OG, leaving Liquid two men down for the first time since they started. What do you do when Fada tells you he's feeling tired and needs a break? Do you convince him to stay? Tell him he's great? Hell no! Fuck Fada! You replace it with the best player in the entire universe, a god among mortals, the Miracle himself. 9k MMR God! Miracle joined Team Liquid post TI6 in what was one of the biggest shock roster moves of the season, disillusioned with OG after their loss at TI6 and splitting for green or bluer pastures. Liquid, who had once failed to win two majors, now had a double major winner in their ranks. A man who literally has his own money and was known as one of the greatest players in Dota. Now, all that was left was to fill the void by the traitor Jerax, who OG poached to replace the kicked Moon Meander. Having recruited the greatest player in the world, Liquid decided to show mercy to their enemies when replacing their position four and went with the lovable yet harmless Boba. The new Liquid team was formed, but the new season results were less than mediocre. It quickly became apparent that Miracle would need time to adjust to a new team and his new team to him. While OG held his hand in the early game and spoon-fed him farm, Liquid were expecting him to man up, but the vultures never went too far away from him in the mid lane, and it was not the explosive start people were expecting. The Boston Major Regional Qualifier soon rolled around, and Kuro himself said desperate times had called for desperate measures. The meta of the time involved Drow and Luna, two heroes Matumbo was too manly to be able to play, so Kuro took the reins and exiled his carry to support. The stroke of genius from that move almost paid off, but not quite, and Liquid missed out on their first ever Major. It was clear changes needed to be made, and Kuro knew exactly who to trust. A man who was playing his go-to career from a small net bar in Lebanon. A man who knew the mid lane like the back of his hand. A man who could take Liquid straight to the top, GH. The Lebanese player slotted in the lineup seamlessly. Liquid quietly let Boba move on. GH's ability to support the mid lane and incredible team play gave Liquid a new lease on life, and Miracle was back to his best. They missed out on the Boston Major, but they ended 2016 with a first place at Dream League Season 5, a result which would spark their revival. While the other teams were at Boston, Liquid waited, seething with rage that they were the only top tier team that didn't make it, and they took all of January off to scrim, scrim, scrim. When February finally rolled around, they busted through it like water through a dam. Liquid, who had been out of action since the Boston Major season, were heading back to where they belonged. Star Series Season 3 was the first land of 2017, and it was crucial. Having missed the Boston Major, they had zero chance for a direct invite to Kiev, and without a land title to their name, Star Series was their final hope to impress the bigwigs at Bow. They did not stumble when they arrived in China, toppled Group B going straight into the playoffs, claiming Star Series 3 title with a thumping victory against VGJ. A direct invite to the Kiev Major followed, where they fought hard but only placed fifth. After Kiev allies were on TI once again, and due to their performance, a direct invite was out of the question for Liquid. Kuro and his team needed to do something more than win a LAN. They needed to show Volvo that they could crush. So Liquid mustered up all their strength, harnessed all their energy, and unleashed a monsoon of carnage, of which there were no survivors. Liquid headed to Star Ladder Invitational 2 in China and blew the other teams away, taking a LAN title in four matches. But they weren't done yet. <laughs> Oh no! They hopped on a plane to Moscow where they had a job to do, defend their glorious epicenter title. They had rebuilt their team, they had missed a major, but they were not going to miss TI. But Tumbo Man was smiling during the finals of epicenter, and you know that when Matu was happy, somebody was about to get hurt. In an incredible
incredible 3-1 smash against evil geniuses, Liquid secured their direct invite to TI. Having traveled through the fire, they were burned by disappointment, scorched by failure, but kept on going. They delivered when it mattered the most, only to become one of the six teams to get the golden ticket to TI. Liquid's pressure was weak after TI6, but in the following months, those drops of water banded together to become the thunderstorm that we know today. And those clouds are heading to TI7. Let's take a look at the boys on the Liquid squad now and see just what makes this team hold so much water. The man in charge of Liquid has always been Kuroki, a German star who was part of the first team that dominated the Dota 2 scene in its infancy, Na'Vi. His impact to the scene with Na'Vi still lasts today, with many fans' affinity for him stemming from his days in the CIS organization back in 2013 and 14. Over the course of his career, he has earned over $1 million and won an incredible 34 different tournaments with a staggering 900 official tournament wins. If you've ever needed to find a man and that knew himself some dotes, you found it right here. A soft-spoken support player, Kuro has never been one to brag about his achievements, but he has been able to stay on the top for the last seven years. Once claiming that if he wasn't a pro player, he would like to be a garbage man, he would be happy living a simple but practical life if it wasn't for his insatiable competitive drive. He is one of only four players to have qualified for all seven internationals, and he is a man that steers clear of any drama. The Team Liquid roster was his own creation, and a calm and collected approach has steered that team through even the darkest of times. Kuro has an incredible eye for talent, which has been a big key to Liquid's success, and is one of the most talented and versatile captains out there today. No matter what ship other captains sail, they know to respect the rough seas that lay before them if they ever shove off into the wild oceans of Kuro. One of the original members of Five Jungs that later became Team Liquid, Matumbo Man is the Joker of the team, but he is anything but a Joker on the battlefield. A real-world trained sea captain, Matumbo burst into the scene by winning the largest land in Finland, being noticed by Fnatic and joining the competitive Dota world. The Finn left Fnatic shortly after to form the all Finnish four anchors and sea captain, bringing attention to the talents of himself and former Liquid star Jerax at the end of 2014. Jerax and Matumbo were best friends who played like longtime pros, complimenting each other and putting so much unbelievable pressure on their enemies that they could not catch their breath, not to mention win the game. In 2015, Matumba moved to five jungs after an offer from Kuro, who wanted to teach the new star how to play with his years of experience. Matumba Man loves in-your-face murder heroes. His personal favorite is Lycan, who he has shown time and time again is capable of single-handedly decimating a match. He is a man who goes to any lengths to achieve victory, and many attribute his drive to win due to his beautiful lover, the Matumba Woman, who is rarely seen cheering him on via Twitch. What more is there really to say about Matumba Man? He's one of the funniest guys in the scene, but one of the only ones that will crack open a beer with some fans and hang out like one of the boys. You know, one of the boys that plays dotes for millions of dollars at a time. Sure, skills are fun to watch, but you haven't lived until you've seen one of his famous interviews. Atu's been cracking jokes and spanking asses since he came into his own in 2015. To sum it up, a tumble man's name means big black dicks, and he commonly has sent gigantic black dildos by his fans. Yeah, that just about sums up the enigma of one of the world's greatest players, the Tumble. Miracle's jump into Dota began at 12 when his brothers would frequent the land cafe in Jordan, but not allow him to come. Needing to prove to his brothers that he was worth tagging along, Miracle began grinding Dota and uh, never really stopped. When Valve unveiled the MMR system, Miracle started with 5,200 and decided that he would be the highest MMR player ever on that very day. Although he started his career with Balkan Bears, Miracle was most famous as a pub stomper, climbing the European leaderboards and becoming infamous in the high MMR community of Europe for his amazing skills. After surpassing the long-standing number one leaderboard player Wii, Miracle became an overnight success after he was picked up by Monkey Business, who went on to become the OG organization we know today. When No Tail invited him to OG, he took a while to respond, thinking that the attempts to contact him were troll accounts. After playing a few games with No Tail, Miracle became addicted to the high level of play, so he joined OG. Shortly after the dream he set forth as a kid became true, and he became the first player to ever reach 9k MMR. And yeah, he won two majors, but who cares about that? Miracle is widely considered the best mechanical player in Dota 2, with incredibly fast reflexes and micro, allowing him to perform combos us mortals <laughs> could never dream of. After TI6 with OG, he was looking for a new challenge, and decided to leave OG to play under the famous Kuroki. During his time in OG, he was the centerpiece of the team, but since joining Liquid, he has become more of a team player, making him a more well-rounded and deadly competitor rather than just a hyper farmer from his OG days. Today, Miracle is one of the greatest mids in history, taking the lessons he learned from Kuro on teamwork and turning him into one of the most well-rounded mid players in the scene. Want to hear more about Miracle? Well, guess what? You can't. Because while Miracle is a fascinating person who is fun to hang around and an astounding player, he also runs away from me at every event and refuses to do interviews. Why? I don't really know. He's a normal dude who has a lot to say unless he's going to be quoted. So next time you see the rake god, master of all pub stompers, go ahead and flip him off for me and tell him to do some goddamn interviews. Bastard. I do love him, though.
bastard. The Bulgarian offlaner mind control is a mystery wrapped inside of an enigma. He started playing at five years old when his parents got him his first PC, and at 12, he played his first game of Dota 2, where he had a serious addiction and would play for days at a time. Feeling that he couldn't get better playing with other Bulgarians, he won tournaments three years in a row and hungered for a team that could keep up with him and teach him some new tricks. Eventually, he started to beat pro players from Navi and others in his pubs, and his reputation began to grow, with many people believing he was undefeatable. His record in the face of pro league leaderboards caught the attention of pro players in Europe who would fall into his might, and as a result, he became a stand-in mercenary, coming in on command for European teams such as Burden United to destroy enemies before leaving without a trace of regret. Eventually, he was asked personally by Kuro to join his squad, who, like Miracle, thought it was a scammer trying to trick him. His consistency has kept Liquids off lane in good shape, and he has been the team from the very beginning. After Kuro saw that diamond in the rough and invited him into the project. After joining, Mind Control became more and more successful, shocking the world with his incredible Darkseer and proving that he could tango with the best offlaners in the scene. And that's really all I got on the guy. He, uh, he likes Snickers, too. Mind Control's a quiet dude during tournaments, but it's all smiles before and after, like a true professional. But if you think this cuddly looking man is a pushover, you ain't never been in an offlane against him. No longer the traveling hitman of Dota, he has finally settled in Liquid to make himself part of history. When Mind Control's not playing Dota, he plays chess. And when he was asked what he would do if he wasn't a pro gamer, he said he would try to become a pro gamer. Mind Control was put on this earth for one reason, to win him some dotes. The most recent addition of Team Liquid and the catalyst for their return to dominance, the Lebanese player GH brought his team new and immediate success after acting as a stand-in for Boba, later becoming an official member during Dream League. Prior to Liquid, he had no real competitive experience, but he showed that he was a big name player in the pubs and helped Liquid qualify for the Dream League finals in only his first few matches. After that trial by fire, he became a standout MVP on the squad through his ability to hard support the team and make incredible room for them with early game ganks and massive aggression with hardly any farm at all. A phenomenal support player, his Wisp is almost permanently banned by opposing teams whenever they face Liquid. His biggest asset though is perhaps not his in-game skill, but his skills with human beings. GH is extremely personable, and his positive attitude and willingness to leave Ego at the door in order to learn from his experience and teammates is one of the reasons he's become so good so fast. Him joining the team was just what Miracle needed to help him win the mid lane and avoid ganks, but his personality fits extremely well with Liquid and their fans. After their failure to qualify for Boston and their poor performance when Miracle first joined, the team was on the road to disband until GH arrived, hold them together in game and out of it. GH's legend is just beginning, and he hopes to see it reach new heights at TI7. And that will just about do it for the Liquid down low. Thanks for watching, everybody, and a special thanks, of course, to our Patreons who help make this video possible. How they can review the scripts, help me give me ideas, and uh, all that jazz. Big shout out to Maustrix from Join Dota, who helped me write this script, and all the other guys who helped as well. Of course, we got our editor, Kaz, we got David the graphics guy, we've got Sproink the music guy, and we've got you there watching at home. So thanks again for your support. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys at TI7.